William Shatner. Okay. We we have a complication. I have to move over here so that my phone can reach the outlet. Okay. Okay. Christina is going to dictate a message to William Shatner because my friend Jess is on a airplane with him right now. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. Jess. Exclamation point. Okay. <laughs> My friend Christina. No, I. I okay, didn't. all right. Start over. Okay. <laughs> no, it's your it, chance. I, I, I can't think of what to say. All right. Okay. Well, I don't know how long her flight is, so you better think. Okay. If anybody has any good ideas, let me know that what I can <laughs> say to William Shatner because I have a direct line to him right now. So weird. Yeah, I think he's doing his show in Vermont. Must be. Although I think just, oh, I can't. Huh. I can't remember if she's on her way someplace. Someplace. Or she must be home. going someplace. Where's home for her? Uh, Montpelier. Oh, well, maybe he did his show. I might have been last night. You think? Yeah. It's possible. I feel like she was going to, oh, God, the Carolinas or something. See, this is how little I pay attention sometimes to my friend's Facebook posts. Yeah. I know she's going somewhere, yeah. obviously. You and know, now she's on a plane. So. Right. That's cool. My hunch is justified that she's going somewhere. And she got to sit right next to him. I guess. That is just too He's unfair. He's coach, too. That's cool. Good for I him. I love it when fancy He's... people fly coach. Yeah. He's just a good, good I person. I sat next to the band Weezer once in coach. The whole band? I guess. I, well, there were like three or four of them, so I don't remember how many's in that band. That's. Did you like say hi to I them. did I chatted with them actually because they were literally right next like the seat next to me and then across the aisle were, did I you get did seat. you get nervous um was it like that a little bit but see I have bad recognition well I don't really but I knew their faces looked familiar but I couldn't really place why I knew them until they said yeah so I wasn't I wasn't like starstruck from the get-go which That's I good. don't I don't really, weirdly, I don't get that way anyway. There's only like a few people in the world I think that I would feel really starstruck yeah. by. Like, and most of them are dead, so I guess. Not, that, will, not Willie Nelson, no, he's not, not Willie. dead. I, but I feel like Willie and I are buds, so I feel like I wouldn't be that starstruck by him, even though okay. I love him above all. Okay. You know, yeah. love is different than starstruck. Sure, sure. But, you know, uh, Patrick Swayze would have done me in because he's just, yeah. too, he's just too much for real life. And and uh, the crocodile hunter would have done me in. Yes, yes. I forget his name, but it's Steve Irwin. Steve, but also dead. Yes. I I worry that I put a curse on people with my love. Oh. So I'm really glad that Willie is holding on this long because if he had kicked <laughs> off like years ago, I would have known. I would have just been like, "Oh, don't love me." There's a curse. Okay. On all whom I love. I see. 
Anyway. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to leave it pulled up to that in case you have any big. All right. Um, I'll try to think things about you it. you want to say to William Shatner. Well, you could just tell, you could tell him to tune into the show. Why not? They're on an airplane. Yeah, can you do that? Poss- yeah, <clears throat> sure. Right. But if you tuned in now, I mean, how long are we going to keep talking about William Shatner? Because <laughs> that could be. And then he- well, he doesn't want to hear about himself anyway. He just wanted, he would just like the show. See what I'm saying? I see. Okay. Well. Okay. That's all right. It's, it's, Don't bother your I, friend. Oh. <laughs> I'm hoping you have something me. better to say to him than that. Yeah. Well, I had my list that I, you know, I sit and I make a list in the morning. And this morning, I just, if Sorry, I can't. Sorry, I threw you all off. Well, if I can't think of anything, like if nothing is coming to my mind, I just write the first thing that comes to my mind, even and, if I'm not going to talk about it. And that so was. The, the first thing this morning was koalas. Oh, and I said, you can knit, this is just stream um, of consciousness for them or uh, they need some soft blankets right now. There's a place. I yeah. forgot the website, but I'm sure if you just Google any like where to send donations to koalas, you can find it pretty fast because they do. They need little tiny mittens because koalas hand pads and their noses are made of the same thing. And those got singed the worst, like I the ones see. that didn't just get totally fried. Their big injuries are in their hands and their noses. And so right, they need right. these little mittens. I know for some reason I wrote There's down. Pattern. There's I, a pattern online I, if anybody wants to make mittens for the koalas. I just wrote down at least we don't have to worry about koalas sneaking into the house. But then I thought. Something was chewing in my on my house this morning. And well, I couldn't believe it with all the high wind. It was probably in the walls, not outside. Yeah, but it's not a koala. No, a koala would not chew on my house. They're yeah, vegetarians. I think your cats... I are... mean, I guess my house is not made of meat, but still. No, right. No. no. Good point. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, I'm very glad. A meat house would be really yeah. kind of disturbing. It would be a little too <laughs> silence of the lambs. Yeah. Like, what would... Well... I mean, people always say that silence of the lambs, and I never saw it or yeah, well, I don't, don't even don't know what it, it is. I just, I, you live by yourself. Like, it's just when somebody says that, you're it. supposed to like freeze and feel really scared. And you don't have but to do that. I just think, what? Lambs are quiet. There are some other houses, they though, lambs. that are not vegetarian. Like, um, you know, the like Inuit people sometimes use like whale mm. ribs and stuff as oh, framework for their sure. houses. So I, I feel like those don't qualify as a vegetarian home, but they're not vegetarian people. So I guess it doesn't matter. I hadn't thought about it much. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Sorry, I've been painting all week. So the fumes have just gone to my head now and I probably... You know, I know it's hard to believe that I could have knocked off a few more rain cells since last week, but I, it may have did. happened. Yeah, so yeah. just preparing. Well, you. you're just catching up with me. Can brain cells regenerate, though? I mean, we I have sure all this unused so. brain, if, if right? If they can, I'm in trouble. Can't we kind of like tap into that area as the other bits die off? I'm hoping. They call it uh, neuroplasticity. I mean, you know, when people have a stroke to... or something, they relearn sure. these things with a different part of their brain that didn't get killed. Yeah, so. it... If I it, would assume dead brain cells, you just start using non-dead brain cells, right? Sh- oh, man. I mean, I know this isn't your your field of yeah, expertise, but it's I'm just not, hoping you would know that. So if anybody has tips for us about Paul know. Paul how, to, know. how to regenerate brain <laughs> cells, yeah, there's probably some good uh, like herbal teas that you can drink to regenerate your brain. I don't know. You drink tea and it goes down. Not up. Yeah, but then it goes back up. It has to go down to your stomach, but then it disseminates like a tree. Like think of a tree with all the branches going out. That's where because it it had goes down. Well, maybe if you drank tea while standing on your head, no, to get the blood flow really like going up there. Well, they do say standing on your head can make your brain um, neurons fire. um, Like if you have a big exam or something, you're supposed to, to. Do I have to? No, no, you don't have to. I actually I mean, thought... You don't have to worry about it, because you was just, paint I was, all week. No, I just saw somebody standing on their head on Facebook, and I thought, do I really have to do that? Like, is that the thing? Is do. that the thing we all have to do I now? haven't stood on my head since... Well, I guess I showed my kids how to stand on my head a few times, but I haven't stood on my head, like, for a while since I was um, pregnant with either of my kids, because neither of them would flip to the right direction and so 
Yeah. The midwife told me there was a few things I could do. I could try staying out of my head, which is ridiculous when you're nine months pregnant. I mean, it's like the dumbest thing you could ever try well, to do. Well, it's just, it's hard. It's real hard because your center of gravity is just tipping you, you way to, over. You have to do it against the wall. Yeah, I did. Right? And then she said a more modified version of that is to take like a piece of plywood or a board or something mm-hmm. and, you know, put it up against your couch. Yeah. So it's almost like an inversion table. And then you lay on that kind of upside down. You just spend a while like that kind of massaging your stomach and maybe the baby will figure out. Like, that sounds relaxing. Oh, I want to go the I might just way. try that. Yeah, I actually kind of liked that part. Because I, I didn't fall over the way that I don't did. Don't you like it when people like sit on you, too? Um, like that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of somehow it seems like same thing. Well, I need to try one of those weighted blankets. I think that's the same as like <laughs> I forgot people... to get that for you. I think it's too expensive for me it's to get really to you. Expensive. As, uh, it's probably I, like two hundred dollars. I bet you I can make one. There's Out a of... pattern somewhere. But yeah, but what makes it heavy? I think there's like little metal beads in it or something. I yeah. don't know, actually. I don't know what makes it heavy. Yeah. They said you can make Maybe. a weighted one by using like recycled denim jeans <clears throat> yeah. and, and just because so, they're really heavy. Like soaking bread. <laughs> um, you know. You no. Know. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> I know. I'm not, I'm not much of a housemaker. I, that's what? the way I thought of what was heavy. And I thought, of, well, bread gets really heavy when you soak it. Somebody online just described their toddler who was having a tantrum or a baby. Yeah. As a flailing loaf of bread, and I thought that was really a flailing a really loaf kind of bread. Of weirdly accurate. I don't know why the picture that it conjured up in my mind was that, really accurate. I was like, that's yeah, that's great. exactly what babies are when they have a tantrum. Yeah, because that whole central part of them is just it, really it's move. just yeah, it <laughs> just can't go very far. So it is like they're a so loaf ridiculous. Of bread. Babies should be what embarrassed it? at how ridiculous they are. Well, so it's also same with bread. It's pretty ridiculous. It is. The way it just sits there. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's pretty funny. Oh, my God. But I, I do have you some tips. Okay, no, what? I have tips. I have housekeeping tips for you this morning. Oh, great. Okay? Because I went to one of those websites that has... I just don't want to be, like, heavied out today. Okay. So I just I'm thought what's, what would be, like, a pick-me-up kind of a feeling would be house, you went housekeeping, to housekeeping tips. Huh. Okay, so if you, you can shave your sweaters. I knew that. What do you mean you knew that? Hello. I, what? I'm a house. I'm, what? I, I can't. Yeah, you can shave them with, like, a razor. Or you can buy these little devices that looks like a hair buzzer, but it's not. And it's made for See, taking the pills I've, off of sweaters. I you can always... get them everywhere on those seen on TV and infomercial things. It's like a little, it's like a sheep shearer or a dog groomer, but you can do it with a, re- a regular straight razor. I mean, a regular like Lady Bic or whatever. Is this because you have a big family um, that you know stuff like this? Maybe that or I have a lot of pilly sweaters. I don't know. I, I just feel like I would never find this out without the internet. I, I knew about it before the internet. I'm sure. I, sh- I know. Why. That's I saw what somebody I'm who had one of those machines doing it you just act like oh yeah of course i always shave my sweaters well i don't i i am too lazy to shave my sweaters so i'm mostly i mean i spend a good portion of the year not even shaving any part of my body so why am i gonna like well shave does, my sweaters? Does, does 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 jen shave her sweaters uh she might i think she actually i think she sa- shaved a sweater pretty recently because she got it at the thrift store and she saw that it was pilly and she said hey i can save this by just shaving it no this has got to be a sister thing I didn't no. have sisters. I, like, you guys no. share so much information. That was the first time I'd ever seen her shave a sweater. I saw somebody shave a sweater way back in, like, the 80s or the 90s. No, but my point is that girls who know a lot of stuff, they know it because they have sisters or... Yeah, but see... Or they went to boarding school and I they... didn't go to boarding school. And I can't even you French braid hair. sisters. I have two sisters and I can't French braid hair. I thought that was, like... A thing. If but you, you have sisters, you know how to French braid hair. But I didn't even know what that was growing up. French what? braid. Oh. I didn't know what that was. Did you have I hair? I had brothers. I had hair, but I had curly hair. I was going to French braid curly hair. You just not I, had, I wish I had hair. I wish you would just leave your hair curly. You have hair. No, I wish I had curly hair. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about this I so know, many times. I know. I'm like, I just want to swap with you. I, 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 I think I, it's ridiculous that you make your hair straight I free, when all I, I want freeze, is curly hair. I freeze up when you say that. I, I don't understand. Curly hair is like alive. It looks like it looks like my your kids, hair is alive kids, and living, not just limp and dead and hanging on your head like mine. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like my hair to look limp and dead. I don't I don't want my hair. It looks fine on you. It does not look fine on me. I just like it to be flat. 
No, I don't. I don't want my hair flat. <laughs> I don't know. It's a kind of it's a kind of a Native American thing. That's what I think. I know, and I actually have lots of Native American in my blood, and I still don't want my hair to look that way. Okay. Well, you're just at a different phase of the curve. Like you're trying to move into sort of a different uh, love, ethnicity. I love curls. And I'm so trying to much. go back to my native ethnicity. All right. Which probably I left longer ago than you. Because you actually have it in this lifetime. You have like you could look, you could look it up on your chart, your my genealogical chart. chart. That's true. You could find it, whereas I could not. So yeah, it's but you actually look native, and I don't. It's a so spirit, it's kind of spiritual weirdly thing. unfair. It wasn't a spiritual thing. You were born that way. <sighs> okay, you so you let's... just like willed those cheekbones into being. Okay, <laughs> tip, <laughs> tip, housekeeping tip number two. All right, what? It's all about masking tape. Oh, I have used like four rolls of masking tape this week. And how were they? Great. They were great. And were I they? initially went into it really trepidatious because. I was shortcutting a little bit, and I said, I don't think I better put this masking tape down because the paint is not fully, fully uh, cured for, I like, see. the 24 hours just to let see. it cure. And I said, I bet you this masking tape is going to peel the paint up, and I'm going to regret it. Yes. But you know what? It did not. It was fine. Yeah, I didn't really, I wasn't really trying to get information about it, masking tape from you. Cause well, you just said, how was it? So that's information. Getting. Well, I just thought you'd say good or bad. Like oh, my masking good. tape was good. I was using the or blue kind. Tape Are you talking bad. about the white kind? No, that's not masking tape. The blue kind is not called masking but tape. But it's like the same feeling it's, in I your hand. It's like tacky and it's like kind of papery and it tears that same sort of jaggediness. Oh, it's like masking tape, just blue. It's the, but they it make it green stick. too. It's it like you said, it doesn't stick very well, which is the point yeah, when you're that's painting. The point. But masking tape doesn't stick but that I'm well either. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about masking tape that's old and and oh, like, like dried yeah. up. When it's old, you can never get it off. No, it's you... like a per- it becomes one with whatever it was stuck to. If it's dry, yeah. No, I think if it's, use... I'm not talking about when it's melted all together. But you can put it. No, in the... I mean when it's dry and crumbly you, you and can put crusty it, and has you, turned yellow, yellow, you yellow. You can put it in the microwave. Really? Yeah. But you don't have a microwave, and neither do I. Right. So that hint is no okay. Let's go on to three. Us. Although let's some of our listeners, three. I assume, own okay. microwaves. No, listen, this one's really cool. Okay. And this one's actually useful, and I actually tried it this morning, and it oh. works. Okay. If you want to keep your pot from boiling over, do butter you know what you on do? the rim. What? Butter on the rim. Butter. Yeah, you just you just smear a little butter on the rim of your pot, and then it won't boil over ever. Really? Yeah, that's a sugar maker's tip. If you don't want your arch, like all your things to boil over you just put some butter on the rim and once it hits there it goes away no kidding no that's that's been around since like the 1700s dude or earlier you know when did they start making butter or sugaring you know you always act like well everybody knows that everybody i wouldn't wouldn't have known that except for sugaring i wouldn't know i wouldn't know it in like a cooking sense well i was gonna i was gonna say that is i i didn't have butter that's not what my anything oily no, you can put a wooden spoon on the top oh. of Do you your know why, pot. Though? Bet your wooden spoon no. has oils in it. Is it kind of like, you know, it's not like a rough I thought spoon. When, well, I tried it this morning with my hot cereal, yeah. and it just kind of looked like the cereal as it started to bubble up. It looked up, and it saw the spoon, and it got scared, and so it, didn't, <laughs> it wouldn't go any farther. It's oils. You can't, like, it's if you intimida- used a brandy new. It's an new, intimidation technique. It is an intimidation, but if you used a brand new wooden spoon, it might not work. Because there's probably no, like, you know, oils in it yet. Oh, I'm so impressed by you. I, well, I didn't know. I didn't know about the microwave one. So, you know, I've missed one here. Okay. This one, I, I don't think you'd do this. You know how okay. to cut a cake without a knife? Um, yes, with dental floss. God, I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't I, believe okay, you. Okay, under, under okay, my... It. Under my... Um, rough and tumble exterior i actually know <clears throat> quite a bit about household <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> there, there used to be a term when i was growing up it was called you would be called Susie homemaker do you remember that term <laughs> yes i do yeah so you're Susie homemaker and i clearly <laughs> am not but i'm so you know i'm i'm picking it up now sort of now that all your kids are know, grown they, and gone and you just have to yeah, home make. i just i have time now to spend time you know to look into this to research these kinds of things 
Well, it's okay, Christina. Is that the copy of the onion that's always in your bathroom on the back of the toilet? Um, I have a whole stack. Oh, yeah. There's that's some true. great headlines in here, like I'm sad that they don't print that anymore. Yeah, I know. You can only get it online. Right. Yeah. Here's a headline. It says physicist brings in particle from home. He's been meaning to accelerate. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. It's probably time for it's time for a song. Already? That was so fast. I know, it's because you knew so many household tips and you just kept going on and on about it <laughs> ad nauseum. <laughs> but I was interested, I have to admit. Okay. I was very like um riveted. Although to your if you cut your cake with dental floss, I recommend not using the mint or cinnamon flavor because <laughs> it kinda gets in your cake. I think that'd be kinda cool. I mean, if you had a mint a little or cinnamony cake, I yeah. suppose you yeah. would notice. But Wow. So impressive. So impressive. Ten points. <laughs> okay. So here we go. This is our Jennings and McComber. Oh, yay. Uh, it's called Lay Me Down. Ancient longing buried deep, deep within our bones, below the skin running through our veins. Nameless ache for something more Sometimes a gypsy filled with wanderlust Searching for a secret paradise Relentless longing for Eden lost Carved from the clay and the dust Lay me down Underneath the starry sky with the wind in my face suspended between earth and sky And when I die and my soul flies away Let me rest my weary bones wrapped in the earth's embrace An old worn path we walk upon We can find our way in the dark Leaves whisper secrets beneath our feet Secrets the time left behind Nothing more than north and south Nothing but this pole in my breast I don't know how long I've been but take me back to where I belong Lay me down Underneath the starry sky With the wind in my face Suspended between earth and sky And when I die And my soul flies away let me rest my weary bones wrapped in the earth's embrace. Oh, 
Won't you lay me down, let me rest my weary bones. That's fun. I love them. They're so wonderful. They really are. And they're Kara. so good. They're Karen. so good. Too. I know. They play all the time. They just have gotten really good. They love to perform. They're just awesome people, too. When I first saw them, I literally thought they were like 25. And then they're talking about like their grown up children. And right. I'm like, um, what? I know. They're very youthful, especially so Andy. Beautiful. Andy looks so young. But they both look so like, young. And I'm like, six kids uh, or Kara, something. Kara, how have you had these many kids and they're grown up when you look like a child? Yeah. It just happens sometimes and like people that. People are very lucky people. Yeah. Anyway. Well. Man, oh man. This was such a strange week, wasn't it? Yeah, I've lost track Aren't they track all of time. strange? They're all strange. They're all strange. They all have some <clears throat> strange components that just are incorporated into it and then it becomes history i know right which is yeah. so strange which i think uh we have to just well we'll never get used to it i'll never get used to life ever will you um no yeah no i won't it's really windy i yeah. can't it's interesting that we can't really see out of the windows today because they're all iced over up here well, it looks like there's snow in the screens because the screens are still on, right? Isn't that what's what we're looking at? What? It looks like oh, yeah, snow. Yeah, it looks yeah. like frost on screens. It's not though. Oh, I can see screens. I can see screens too, but I think that there's a layer of glass between the screen. Okay, you might be right. And I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, so I'm too lazy I to bother looking. Going well, looking. one of the strange things this week. Was my, you know, my younger brother, right? Yeah. Marek, who you yes. like. Um, I don't like like him. <clears throat> oh, I know. You I don't think even know him. He's intriguing. But I think he's, I think he's adorable. He is adorable. Yeah. And so he's been transferring reel-to-reel tapes onto digital. These are all old tapes that my dad had. Because cool. my dad did all kinds of strange stuff. Speaking, You know, strange is the word today. Strange. My dad was strange. The tapes were strange. Uh, the week was strange. So he he emails me, right? And he says, I found this interview on one of these tapes, and I have no idea, like, what it is. And so he said, I'm going to send it to you, and maybe you can identify who's on the tape. Yeah. So it took me, like, three weeks to figure <laughs> out how to download three gigabytes mm-hmm. in Vermont. That's... Not oh was, yeah, I right? Didn't I have that? I was still yeah. trying to download yes, three gigabytes. I and was, was going to have you come over to my house and. That's right. Well, I finally just said, "Okay, I'm going to try it at home," and mm-hmm. it worked. After did you uh, leave it on hours. overnight or whatever you were going to do? No, I did it in the daytime, mm-hmm. and it did finally all come through. Cool. Um, and so I listened to it, and it's it's an interview with a three year old named Robert Ferrara. That. Why does that name sound familiar? I don't know, but if anybody knows Robert Ferrara, did you try? Did you Google it? Did you Facebook him? I I tried Facebooking it, but there was five thousand Robert Ferrara, and I'd never find him, and I have no idea where the tape was done. But um, so there's three adults who are administering a test to this little three year old neighbor named Robert Ferrara, who is super shy and is really obviously like doesn't want to comply with the test. Why? Wait, really, uh, why were they interviewing him in the first place? Well, that's what I was trying to figure out. I listened to 45 Did minutes of this Did they think he got like, abducted by aliens? Or were they, was this like an IQ test almost? Well, or it what turns, kind of questions were they asking? Yeah, him? it turns out I think it was an IQ test. There's why this was test, your dad doing IQ tests on little well, children? Well, it wasn't my dad interviewing. Oh, okay. So, but he just had the tapes. Well, that's the question. Like, why did my dad have this tape of these three interviewers interviewing this three-year-old? Did and any of the I, interviews? Or, you, blah, 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 blah. Did any of the interviewers ever state their names? No. No. There was one guy who was in charge. It was so funny. It was a typical situation, like from the fifties, right? Mm-hmm. So the guy, the guy is in charge, and then there's these two women who are who he's sort of telling them what to do and mm-hmm. telling them, you know, like talking off to the side in front of the kid. That I don't know. It was just it was a strange. Uh, so what kind of questions did they ask? Little, uh, it was Robert. like he was he was being asked to match. They would say a phrase, and he would have to match a picture to it. And so I, 
That is dumb on a tape. Well, no, it's called. I looked it up because I thought I think they did that test to me too when I was a kid. Yeah, I did an IQ test when I was a kid. Yeah, it's called the Peabody Picture Picture Vocabulary Test. It's a thing. Yeah, they use it. It's a thing. Yeah, I think I had it too. Yeah. So the only reason I could think maybe we had this tape is that my mother used to work in child development at Cornell sometime. Oh, like she would yes. have these part-time jobs mm-hmm. with, and That's maybe what it's from Christina. Yeah. Maybe her boss said, take this home and, you know, analyze it or okay. something. Yeah. But it's just really, it was weird. I don't know if it was worth downloading three gigabytes yeah, to listen to Robert for many Ferrara. days to figure out. <laughs> yeah. It was really, it took a whole month to get to the, to, to the, <laughs> the build up the climax to get to this interview. Did Mark even tell you what the tape was no, before he sent it? No. And oh, I so was, he just left you in suspense. Like, Oh, that's, that's, this is going to unravel all my <laughs> child. This is everything I ever wondered as a child. And instead I was hoping, no. I thought it would be some incredible interview Good job, like, Mark. in the jungle or, you yeah. know, to the CIA or, or something like that. No. Huh. Yeah. So that's that. Sorry. That's okay. You know, I, I'm used to stuff like this. <laughs> like, I'm used to stuff being anticlimactic. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Life is sort of anticlimactic. It, really it has is. a lot of, it has a lot of climax. In some ways I'm glad, like, because think of all the stuff you think is going to happen as a kid. You know, people are always teaching you like stop, drop and roll. Like, like every five minutes you're going to be on fire. Oh, right. I forgot and about that. like quicksand. <laughs> I mean, if you ever watched any like movie or sitcom as a kid, like any adventure, anything, there was always quicksand. Didn't okay? we talk about never, quicksand? Literally never seen actual quicksand in my life. So we t- we talked like for a half an hour about quicksand like two years ago. Right. We and, got I, really and I was into telling you about it. how to how to get out of it if you had I to. Forgot. How, do you, how do you bend way See, over the side and deflect like the weight? So No, that, you're supposed to just not move. No, I know you're not supposed to move, but if you want to take away the suction... You can't be like straight up and down anymore. Like you kind of have to lean over or get distribute your weight differently and then it will release the suction from your legs. Anyway, the point is I'm glad that life is anticlimactic in that way because all these things that I expected were going to happen as a child, like fire constantly and quicksand and, you know, car chases all the time, things like that. Yeah, but other stuff (laughs) happened that was worse. I know it's true, but they don't, there's no like little remedies for those things really. For what? All the other things that you, happened as a like as an adult, just gonna all the heartbreak and things like, like that. Can't they help don't. It. They don't teach you that stuff in school. It's not like the stop, drop, and roll. There's no like just say no. There's no like little motto or mantra to fix like most of the stuff that actually does happen in your adult life. Well, why do we go to school? What the heck? I don't know, Christina. All, what's the other one where you're supposed to throw like baking soda on top of a grease fire? Is that right? Is that right? Uh, maybe. Because you can't throw water at a grease fire because it just splatters more. Right. I mean. That's not going to help either. I've only had one grease fire in my life. And it wasn't in my house. It was in a. It was in the log cabin museum at the Tunbridge Fair. Yeah, but what about divorce? Yeah, they totally. Where's the stop, drop, and roll for that? Yeah. Where's or the, the baking soda? Where do you soda? throw the baking soda? How do you get out of the quicksand? They could at least, when you get married, give you a box of baking soda and look to at the start statistics. you off. On what a is good it up foot? to now? Like 80% of everyone gets divorced. Okay. So that's way bigger statistically. We're going to need to know what to do about that well, than it is. No, I then, think. Then we're going to need to know about quicksand. No, it's not It's not marriage that it's is at fault. It's divorce that's at fault. That's the bad thing they shouldn't have. Like, we shouldn't have that. What? We should make something else happen when things go wrong. Not to, We shouldn't make divorces. Who wants a divorce? What Come are you on, you didn't about? want one. I didn't want one. I well, didn't want I two. wanted not to be married. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what but are you it's, talking about? It's not the fault. I'm really glad divorce is a thing. Like, really glad. No, I'm not. Yeah, but then you'd still be stuck with somebody that's really, no, really evil. That's not the only alternative. What, murder? Smarty pants. Are you just going to kill them off? Oh, I don't need to divorce you. I'll just kill you. No. What then? I don't understand. Like a community group that would come together and embrace the couple that's having a problem and help them work out their problems. I I didn't want my problem being worked out anymore. (laughs) There isn't no working for that problem. Well, that would be... All done. No, no, no more. That's fine. The group could help you decide. Like Emily's done. 
okay? And they'd look I at your need, partner and okay, say, But okay? look at it like as if it's a small town. Like I didn't need the small town input. And in fact, their input was really <laughs> unhelpful because they did not understand anything about it. What? Are you joking? <laughs> Do I need to Heimlich you? No. Stop, drop, and roll, Christina. What happened? <laughs> no, I they just teach you how to Heimlich that. yourself. Though that one is very helpful. No. It is. Do you know how to Heimlich yourself? No. You can do it over the back of a chair, Christine. You just kind of throw your okay, stomach at it until, to talk about until right whatever now. is choking you comes up or you're dead, whichever one happens first. Okay. All right. Okay. This is just to prove my point that life is strange. Yes. And so are we. <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay. It's really cold in so, here. I'm glad we left the door open cold. today. I'm, I'm hot. I'm cold. I'm always cold. What's though. wrong with you? I'm just cold all the, the time. The heat's on. It's blasting. There's cold air Somebody over here. Somebody has to pay for it. Because um, I think these windows don't shut properly, and I'm always opening this one anyway. Okay, do you think it's rude to hand somebody your earbuds? Um, gross. Yeah. It is gross. Kind of. I did, I did it the other day. I was, like, not thinking... But well, I did. It depends I did, how close you are to the person you're handing them to. I did two things. If you it have it, it switched body fluids with them before, it's no, probably fine. No, I had not. Okay. And I made it worse because not only did I just hand him the earbuds and say, "Listen to this," which he was being a play person, he would have to listen. <laughs> but he had it. But he had he had a, a hearing hearing aid, uh. which I, you know, it's a little bit tricky. With earbuds and hearing aids. Uh, yeah, you can't double cram things nope. into your ear. I mean, no, you have there's to only take... so much room in your ear before you, you burst a eardrum. Oh, it was such a mess. Well, he had, did he have he them was... in both ears? Hearing aids in both ears? Um, No, I don't think so. Because you only probably need an earbud in one, right? Sure. Hmm. Anyway, I got through it. Have you That's noticed that your earwax... When I was a child, my earwax was like very clear, like maybe very lightly tinged yellow. And as I've gotten older, it's turning darker, like all more of an amber tone. To yeah, it. I don't really care. No, I don't either. I'm just wondering if that's normal or if it means like something bad. I wouldn't worry. What color is your earwax? I have no idea. It doesn't come out. It's so impacted. It doesn't come out. So I never oh, see it. I have these ear drops you can put in because I no I hydro actually... I'm using hydrogen peroxide. Remember, oh. I told you. Oh yeah, I guess I I guess you did. Well, I have this weird oil that. Because I went to the emergency room one night years ago, flipping out because I had suddenly gone completely deaf and I was terrified. You did? And yeah. Really? Yeah. This was like several years ago. John and I were just first kind yeah. of together and I freaked out. I woke up in the night to go to the bathroom and I couldn't hear anything. No. I was completely deaf. No. It's I could impossible. hear like under, it was almost like underwater. So I was like, I woke John up and shouted to him and had him drive me to the emergency room in the middle of the night. And it was so freaking embarrassing because what had happened is... Uh, being a dance teacher all these years, I dance right in front of speakers and they're really loud and I have them really loud, especially for like my Zumba or hip hop classes because people wanted it really loud. Yeah. And my dad, who has weird safety issues in some areas and no safety issues in others, freaked out and he said I was going to lose my hearing from always being in front of speakers. So he got me all these fancy earplugs to wear. And so I was stuffing these earplugs in my <laughs> in my <laughs> ear every night to go to work. And I guess you're not supposed to wear earplugs like 24-7 basically because it stuffs whatever earwax well, you have back into your ear. And so I had like plugged my whole entire ears up with earwax. I didn't even know I had Oh, a you lot just of kept pushing it in I guess. with the plug? Yeah. So See, I went to the emergency room and it was they were like in hysterics over me freaking out. But it was embarrassing too because like I don't know why earwax seems embarrassing, but it seems – and they had a tiny little – Spoon. It looks like a little melon, like you know what, like melon okay, ballers okay, look like. Okay, a miniature okay, one that was like I, this big, and they put it in my ear, right. and they spooned out like all this earwax, and all then right. they gave me these ear drops. Done. And so we're done with that. We've never had that problem again, but I also don't wear earplugs anymore. We could talk about self confidence. How did you feel after that? Not, not great. I was really <laughs> embarrassed, and John likes to bring it up sometimes when I'm <laughs> feeling too cocky. Like, hey, remember that time that I took you to the emergency room at three in the morning, and they had to spoon earwax out of your ear? Remember that? But it, so everybody had a good time. No, it, yeah, it was it not great. Like everybody I mean, had a good time. I, it's there's everybody some except for me. That's a much more fun kind of emergency for those pe poor people working all through the night. They right? are like, used to seeing me for really weird things. Like I am not 
even though my family is a family of kind of hypochondriacs, I don't, I don't go to the emergency room for things. I usually am just like, oh, so there's a deathly I, pain there. I'm just going to yeah. ignore it and hope it goes away. It's like my car too. I just, yeah. if it's a weird noise, sure. I just hope it's fixed by tomorrow. Denial. Sometimes that works yeah. great. Denial's but good. the times I've gone to the emergency room were always for something absolutely Stupid. ridiculous. Yeah. Like the tiny little tick embedded underneath my nipple. That was like embarrassing. Oh. And then the time I got my nose broken by a hula hoop, that was embarrassing. Oh. When they just asked I, me I how I did certain I, things, it's like so <clears throat> it's like the stupidest story. Like I'm making up some like ridiculous thing. Like I broke my nose because a hula hoop hit my nose. Yeah. Like cuz I'm a klutz. Yeah. Like all these things usually come about because I'm a klutz right, and, cause and you're, they're ridiculous. You're just doing something fun, having fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, my emergency room visits are quite different people, than yours. It's just stupid. Yeah. Like, how How could you do yeah. that? No, well, don't get a throat abscess, for example, where they throw you in the chair and then they jab needles into your the back of your throat. Ew. No, it wasn't that bad. Okay. It really wasn't. All right. But I know you don't like the dentist, so we I shouldn't talk won't. about mouth-related okay. problems. It's okay. I, I know you I have just to go need at some point. people that love you. To hold your hand and everything's fine. Everything is everything is manageable. It's embarrassing to ask if people can come with you though into a dentist or a doctor. I mean, you do that when you're a small <clears> child, <throat> but when you get older, I would feel bad being like, "Can this person come with me and hold on?" My they wouldn't like, care. Not at my dentist, the baby well, dentist. It just makes me feel the baby dentist lets judged. people in to come and hang out with you and probably play card games if you'd like. Well, that would be nice. So it's time for what? another song, I it's think. It's really cold It is over cold. Here, there's, a, there's a draft. I agree. I suddenly felt it it's coming. It's coming. It's yeah, coming there's from me. Yeah, there's a window that's open. I'm like that lady on Frozen who just makes <laughs> the cold <laughs> shoot it yeah, out of my fingers. I think somebody needs to come and, you know, do some carpentry. Isn't this an environmental law school? Yeah. This is not, this is not, this very, is not very environmentally sound to have yeah. such a waste of heat here. I know. All right. What next, are you going to play? I'm going to play... Uh, Wagtail. Oh, good. Remember that fantastic band? Yeah. Yeah. That you were in? Yeah. This is called Meet Me When the Sun Co- Goes Down. I know this song. I can't even re- say it. Meet Me When the Sun Goes Down. I can say it. All right. I have a great man. Oh, I actually played a lot of cool stuff on this, but I, you'll have to oh. guess which parts I played. Well, Here you we- just said. Yeah. Okay. Here we you go. just said mandolin, dude. <laughs> Of 
call your name Now you know you'll never be the same Hear the ancient willow sigh As the clouds spin across the sky And watch the day's last embers die Nice symbol hit. Yeah. I remember that symbol hit. Hey, Christina, we got snow again. Now now I can teach you to downhill ski this week. And you can teach me how to not crash into things on my backcountry skis. That'd I don't know. Better. Possibly. I think it could happen. I'm, pa- I'm starting to record again. Yeah, what? I have, I have a lot of stuff coming up. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll have to find so, some time because uh, it's going to be beautiful out maybe. Uh, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have spelling words. I found this fantastic Uh-oh. Reader's Digest list of 15 of the hardest words to spell, but they're not like you would expect. They're pretty ordinary words. They just have little oddities to them that st- right. seem to stump people, you know, over and over. Let's see what you got. I wonder how William Shatner would do on a oh, spelling see, test like this. You're running this. out of time. I don't know how long this flight is. If you want to say something to him, you better tell no. me quick. I don't want to bug him. All right. You know, if he was here, we'd probably have a nice time, but mm-hmm. Okay. I don't think he All can right. get to know me this way with the text. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Okay, so uh dilate. Dilate. D I A L A T E? No, that doesn't look right. <laughs> This is really hard. I couldn't get this. I would didn't get this. I don't know who would get this. Who would get this except a doctor uh, or a well, nurse? It seems like a pretty easy word. Why can't I get it? Right? Di- hmm. Well, think that. Well, think of it this way: dilation. That's the way to think about it. Ah, ah get it, get it, get it. D i l a t i a t e. No, no, no. Ah. That's way too complex. What? D i l a t e. That's it. Isn't A-E? that a shocker? A E D I L A T E dilate. A-T-E. Dilate. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's a shocker that it's that simple. I know. Th- this is a simple one, but weird. Okay. I think you'll know this one. Indict. No. You know that, right? It's like indict. Yeah, that's indict. it. You got it. I N D I C. Oh, this stupid iPad is, it wouldn't what? charge up this morning. It's gonna die. Oh no! Oh no! Should we play like? It's got ten percent. Should, should we play the last song now so that it can no, die? No, I actually could plug it in. Why? Oh, yeah, I'll here I'll you. unplug my phone and you plug it in. Hold on a second. Let me stand up. Yeah, but then I here. I have to get my extension cord. If I think the iPad's gonna die, then I bring the extension cord. Do you trust it for saying ten percent? Because mine goes from twenty to like burp, zero. Not my, I don't have an iPad, but my computer goes from, like, the warning is around 20-something, and then it's yeah. just done. Let me just get my extension cord, because you okay. should always travel with an extension cord. I know. I you usually know what I'm saying? Do. And you do in your car. You probably have 10. I, no, I just have one, and it's there for clogging, because... What? Do you care what color it is? Like, what's your Mine favorite color? I like black. You, oh, that's unusual. Most people don't have black extension cords. Black is classic. Although orange well, is the new black, so is, no, if that's what you have, I I've, can no, accept that. No, I hate the orange ones. <laughs> I hate them. I would. I, I do too. I think yellow is okay, but my favorite is green. We only have light, black light. and green for our wedding business because lime I run green, green outdoors. Like, like forest to, green or lime green? Um, I have forest green. Yeah, check out the lime green. I don't care for it because it doesn't blend in with the grass as much for our wedding business. If, like, the DJ needs to have um, music out at the wedding site, that's neither of those colors. That's oh, that's taupe or tan. Yeah, but this, this Beige. You can unplug my phone. It's No, you can unplug my phone. Yeah, it's fine. I don't need it. Um, yeah, I like to have a green one that blends in with the grass so that it doesn't look ugly. Although, on the other hand, John has pointed out when it blends in with the grass, people might trip on it. But I run it way up on the hill away from people. And then I like black because I just think black goes with everything. Yeah. 
But that's a very nice neutral extension cord you have there. I always try to get things that I don't mind looking at. What does because, it mean if the extension cord's flat like that? Um, See how it's not round, but it's flat? Yeah, it fits into certain situations better. Hmm. Like you under know. carpets and stuff, you mean? Yeah, oh. exactly. I'm just wondering if there's a difference in wattage when they're flat. Nah. So I've okay. got like a bunch more words. Should I just read oh. that? I'm just going to read it Just read the list. The, yeah, and you can tell me which one. Just pick one that okay. you think is cool. All but right. these are all tricky. Because Reader's Digest said so, and it's true. Reader's Digest? Does is, that still exist? I don't know. Uh, sometimes I see my, copies of it at the mechanics, but I think it might be really old. My yeah. grandmother used to always have my it. My grandmother had it, too. Yeah. And every time I read it, it was always like a horror story or something to make me paranoid. Like, here's yeah, here's like all, kids here's getting people who kicked actually by cars. Have, yes. Right? Or here's all the people who have appendicitis, and it's on the left side. Which is weird and Instead deformed, right so people like couldn't so, diagnose oh. it. So then they would like it would pop and die. And so wow. I spent half my childhood Shh. being terrified that my appendix was on the wrong wow. side. Okay, I don't really know yet. Well, you got through that, but you're not dead. Not yet. Okay, okay sacrilegious, ingenious, mm-hmm. minuscule, mm-hmm. onomatopoeia. I think you've made me spell both minuscule and onomatopoeia before. Uh, minuscule, really? I think you have. M I N U S C U L E. I think you have. Okay. Accommodate. Yeah. Oh, I, that's just that's like, that's easy. like, no, it's Accom- not. It's not, it's not. It's accommodate, right? It's like occasionally I can't ever spell. Can you? Can yeah. you remember if it's two C's to start with? It is. Two you C's. can? It is two I C's. never can remember. How is it that you can always get it wrong and you spell it all the time? What I don't does know. that say because about your my head? brain is, is trained to spell it the wrong way. But I just think I'm so baffled by that phenomenon of a certain word that you just can't I know, I get know. through your thick skull. It happens. Okay, more conscientious. Often. I always have trouble with that one for some reason. Do you have trouble with just you conscience? Don't... Conscience and conscious. It's conscience. Right. Except it has a T, so not a C. I think for conscientious. Yeah. Yeah. Now you we can spell Wednesday. Right, that's, day. Yeah, that's how they always do, taught you. Is that you think some people actually have trouble with that? I think one? they do, and they also have trouble with February. When it's February, but that's like library. I know who has trouble with library. I don't know, Christina, but some people do. I mean, look, look at I fail the spelling test te- every week, but they teach you about library so early. At least in my generation, library was a really important word to know how to spell. Yeah, I can't imagine not being able to spell that. But... Okay, how about Bologna? Bologna, do you mean baloney. Bologna. I don't Bologna. even know what that means. Unless... Bologna. Bologna. We used to call it Bologna. They call it baloney. That was baloney. Like, no, people like low class people call it's it like baloney. Balog- it looks like bologna. Yeah, bologna. That's but what that's it is. Pronounced that's, the, that's the thing. In my. It's a thing. Bologna. Of the trailer park. It's baloney. <laughs> you are white trash. I know. I've been called white trash so many times. I just read an article about she whether used to or not I fry, fry bologna, bologna. No, no, I didn't. Yes, I barely did. even ate it anyway. But I do every once in a while have a hankering for it on white bread with mayonnaise. You you do? Yeah. Thanks for. I had it. I would usually have it at my grandmother's house because they would buy like a log of it, like a big log. Ew. And then you could have some. a log. What do you mean a log? Like it looked like a log of bologna. But it was sliced. It was it was pre sliced because that's what it makes off. it bologna. Oh my God. <laughs> it has to be sliced to be okay, bologna. Okay, listen. Or else the experts sl- are Oxford Meyer, and this little song goes, Wait. "My bologna has Stop. the first name." It's O S C A R. My baloney has the second name. It's M E Y M E Y E R. Oscar Mayer. Is that what you sang last week? Yes. Oh, you just didn't. I'm finish just it. saying. I'm just saying. If they are going to call it baloney and they make the baloney, they don't say my bologna has a first name. <laughs> but if it's a, if it's if it's not sliced, it's a salami, right? Um, no. Or a sausage. Salami is far healthier than bologna. What do you mean? Why? Um, I oh, think because... it's like, I think it actually resembles meat. Like there's some bits of meat actually in it. You know, I really hate it when vegetarians lecture me about meat. <laughs> I'm not a full on vegetarian. I am. <laughs> 
You know what's really weird, though? And I have not been able to figure out what the hell it even is, is that pimento loaf. I don't know. Pimento is it loaf. Like, it's Come like on. a salami joking, right? bologna hybrid with little olives and like seeds. What, they like breed them or hybrid? They bring two this things is why together? I have trouble. You know how you sent us fruitcake home? Like John ate it all because I couldn't eat it because I'm freaked out about fruitcake because it looks like pimento loaf to me. <laughs> It's like no, they have yeah, like meat that has scary. like little that's like scary. it has like little gelatin like candied like candied fruit and stuff. Look, stuck that's in why it. I gave it to you because I'm scared of fruit cake. <laughs> you weren't evidently. You I, said well, I asked you if you were. I knew that John loves fruit cake okay. because John lo- like eats the grossest. Right, but crap. you and I are scared. I'm of terrified of fruit cake. I wouldn't put fried fruit cake. Balloon, good enough. <laughs> I'm technically not afraid of fa- fried bologna. I just don't choose to eat it. I, I don't think it does anything. It just kind of curls up around the edges. Otherwise, it retains I don't its know. bologna. We're so we're so conditioned to not be scared of things that we should be scared of, and scared of things <laughs> that we sh- don't need to be scared of. You know, it's like it's scoop. We should be scared of fried bologna. Yes. Okay, one of these words that we haven't gotten to yet is <laughs> nauseous, which seems very very apropos. I know. N a u s e o u s. I spell that. I spell that one a lot too. I spell it wrong. I can tell you right now how I spell it with a e a e a e a. Adam on a Are you gonna make it? Are you gonna make it to the end of this show? I know the next word is orangutan. It's yeah. I mean, you say orangutan, right? Like tang, like the orange space NASA drink. Tang. Right, but there's no G in it. It's How'd just like oranatan. 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 No, but it's or- orange tan. I don't like those animals that much. I don't like the English language. No, that too. But I feel bad because once we were at Granby Zoo with my grandparents, and my grandparents, who were kind of chubby, we were at the orangutan pen. <laughs> And for some reason, they started taunting each other about there was this big fat orangutan sitting there with its like, its rolls. It was just sitting there and it's like orangutan boobs like hung almost down to its like lap because of the way it was hunched. You know, they like hunch. They like hunch. Yeah, no offense. Anyway, so my grandfather said, look, there's your grandmother. And my grandmother got really mad at him obviously and she said excuse me that is you and they started back and forth arguing about which one of them looked the most like that orangutan without their clothes on and i remember as like a seven-year-old feeling horrified and scarred about thinking about the fact that when my grandparents took off their clothes they really did look like that so it's all coming out now I mean, at least it's coming out finally. <laughs> this because is so now much, you're purging. So yourself. much. You're so much cheaper than my therapist. <laughs> all right. I, are you to well, the end of this delightful <laughs> list of memories? Yeah. I mean, yeah. think of all the money we would have spent if we d- didn't <laughs> this do radio? this show, and then we had to do so much therapy. Yeah. I would have to do like so much therapy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do Ditto. anyway. Yeah. But this, in this case, <laughs> it's reduced somewhat. Oh. oh, we have to go. What? We have to go. You didn't even say what the show is, but we have oh, like- Oh, God, 11th Hour Radio, okay. Christina Stikos, Emily Howe, uh, 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 Fridays at 11 on Rotten Community Radio. Thank you, sponsors and underwriters, blah, blah, blah. We have a podcast. We have a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And our website is 11thHourRadio.com. Or you can subscribe on YouTube or Apple Podcasts, and Christina's going to play the last song. What is it? <clears throat> it's Neil Fitzgerald. I love him. Yes. He's in town, and he's this one of our his, DJs. Yeah, it's his new album. It's called- reach you did you record it no oh ready yeah bye you guys have a great week stay warm take care
see This world inside of me I look down this dusty road To see what life may unfold Then I see light, the glare. Well, I'm just trying to reach you, help you through the fog along the way, take a stroll down by the And we can say Nice to be Just try.